So you're making your own game and now you would like to have some text in the game and you would like the text to look a little cooler than just normal text. Well then Text Mesh Pro is the right tool for you because it allows you to create a shadow effect, to create a glow, an outline and even a 3D effect at your liking. And in this video you are going to learn how to do all of that step by step in a Unity example. So let's get started. And by the way, this is Unity Monday. So if you're interested in Unity, definitely check out our content every Monday. And please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. All right, so I'm going to create everything from scratch with you, starting with a 3D project. I'm going to call this one Text Mesh Pro Demo. Alrighty, so Text Mesh Pro is the ultimate text solution for Unity. It provides so many features for text formatting and your layouts. It's very flexible during styling and texturing and you can create 2D or even 3D fonts with effects in Text Mesh Pro. You can even use Text Mesh Pro as a UI text element and a 3D game object. So you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to working with this cool little text formatting tool. Let's start by creating a Text Mesh Pro example here. If you use Text Mesh Pro for the first time, this one will appear. So import TMP Essentials. And while you're at it, also import the TMP Examples and Extras. Once that is done, you will see that you have a bunch of new assets here in your folder at the bottom. So there's a new Text Mesh Pro folder with the documentation, examples and extras, fonts, resources and sprites. Now you have this 3D text as a 3D object. So this text here is in fact a 3D object. And you can see it has a mesh renderer once you click on the text and check it out in the inspector. There is also this text mesh pro component as you can see here and a material. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to change the directional lighting to white. And I'm going to add a plane to the game. So here, 3D object, a plane. I'm going to reposition and rescale it. So it's going to be significantly larger. I'm also going to give it a different name. I'm going to call this one ground. Then I'm going to create a new folder, which I'm going to call materials. And I'm going to create a new material in here, create new material. And I'm going to call this one ground underscore material. Here I'm going to make sure that the smoothness is set to zero and the color is a white color. Next, I'm going to change the lighting settings. So you can go to Window, Rendering, and then select Lighting Settings. Here for the environmental lighting, I'm not going to use the skybox, but I'm going to use a fixed color instead. As you can see here, now this underground changed and I'm going to change the ambient color here to be RGB 0 to 1 and I'm going to put all of them at 0 0.5. Now that I have this white color from my lighting, I can change the ground material. So you might have wondered why we had this ground material if it's now completely white and we cannot even see the text anymore. Well, that's all part of the demonstration. So we're going to change the color of the ground material now to something orange. You can pretty much select any color you like and I'm just going to drag that color into my material. Okay, now we can see the sample text significantly better. Next, I would like to add a player to the game because this text should be text that is floating above the player. So let's create a 3D cube, which I'm going to call player, and I'm going to give it a different material as well. So let's create a material here. I'm gonna call this one player material, and this should be a bluish color. So I'm just gonna select a blue color here you can take any color you like and I'm going to drag that onto our player. So you can see now we have this little cube here which is inside of our game. Now let's also change the skybox because we can see that the skybox has this bluish color in the background but I'm going to change that. So let's create a new material here which will be our skybox and the shader will not be a standard shader but it will be a skybox. So I'm just gonna select the cube map here as the skybox. Then I'm going to change the color so that it's a white color and the exposure should be something around two. And yeah, let's go with that. 
Now I'm going to assign the skybox to my lighting. So let me go back to my lighting settings. And here I'm going to drag my skybox in. As you can see, now we have a white background. And if we look at a specific angle, you can see that the text now is not going to be very visible with that white skybox. In play mode, you can even see that there is no difference at all because the skybox is white as well as the text itself is white as well. But that will help us to make it even clearer what the Text Mesh Pro text can do for us. I'm also giving my Text Mesh Pro a different name here and I'm changing the width to 15 and height to two. So you can see that now it doesn't fit into one line anymore so it makes a, this line break for us. Let's play around with this a little bit. So here, if you scroll down, you go to the Text Mesh Pro text. Here you can enter sample text. So I'm going to use HTML here directly. So that's a cool thing. You can use HTML in it. As you can see here, via HTML, I added a color. So I said, this is going to be the color. Then I said that this text should be bold. So the player text should be bold. And then I wrote one afterwards. So now let's change the font size a little bit so that we can see it properly. So I'm going to change the font size to something like 15. And there you are. This is player one now. You can see this part is Influence, so this player keyword here is in this color, but one is not in this color. So it's still the old color that we had. At this point, I'm going to reposition my player as well as my text. And as you can see, it's towards the left-hand side, but I would like to position it so that it's centered. So first of all, I'm going to auto size it. You can see now it automatically fits the text into the box as well as I want to center it with the alignment here. So I'm centering it. Now it's on top of our player. If we look at it, that's how it's going to look like now. And I can even drag it onto the player. So now this text will always be on top of the player. If you want to play around with the font style, you can, for example, make everything capitalized. So you can see now the text is kept. I'm going to change the vertex color to, let's say something more pinkish like this. You can see only one has been influenced. Player has not been influenced by this change. So player is still this blue color that we have defined here in our text. So by using HTML. So whatever we have in HTML, it overrides what we have set up in our Text Mesh Pro text settings. Let's play around with this even more. So with this one here, let's add a color gradient where you can now play around with the colors. So here I'm going to have a four corners gradient and the color preset is going to be yellow to orange. So I'm going to use this one here. As you can see, there are multiple options which are there by default within the assets and it automatically sets those colors that we have here. So now I'm going to play around with this. I'm going to make this a blue color as well as this one as well a blue color and you can see it creates this gradient effect that you have here for one. Player, however, is not influenced by this, as you can see due to the HTML code that we had here. If you want to ignore this HTML code, however, you can click override tags. If you take this box, then you can see that player now is also using this vertex color as well as the color gradient. You can use your own color gradient. You can decide to not use a predefined one, and you just go here and select one of the options that you have here. So let's say we have want to have a vertical gradient and we want to go from, let's say, a purplish color to a dark blue color, something like this one. You can see then we can create our very own gradient for the text here. If you scroll further down, you can see you have options of spacing. So let's say we have a slightly different text here. It's not just player one, but let's say something like player one from our video game, for example. Then you can play around. Let me drag that up a little bit. You can play around with it by changing the spacing options here. Let's say we go to five. You can see the text is spaced differently than we can even have a higher distance between the lines. You can see here, just play around with that setting. Let's say we want to have a 
a little bit of space between words or we want to change the space between words or between paragraphs. So you can really play around with the spacing options as you please. Quick pause. This video is sponsored by myself. I don't have a sponsor, but I create video courses that are paid because I need to make some money, right? So I hope you help me out. If you love this channel and you love the content, check out the link in the description. There is a course that you can buy super discount in the description but the thing is you are not only supporting me but you're getting something back and you're getting a lot more back than you're paying for it i can tell you so i hope to see you in the course you're going to learn how to build a bunch of cool games and a lot more about unity game development all right so see you there hopefully and let's get back to the video when it comes to text fonts are always an important aspect because fonts they impact how the text is going to look like and you can search for free fonts on 1001freefonts.com and of course you always need to make sure that the font that you're actually using is free to use without attribution or anything and yeah you, know, you can just make sure what the licensing is for that particular font that you're using so if you're using it for a commercial application or game then always make sure that you have the license for it i'm just going to search for montserrat which is a font that I would like to use. So this one here by Jurgeta Ulanovsky, for example, I'm just going to download this one. And then I'm going to create a new folder here. Fonts is going to be the name for it. And here I'm dragging in the font. Once you open the fonts, you might need to install them. So if you have not installed them before, you will need to install them real quick. And then you can drag them into your project. At this point, you can create an asset out of your fonts. So you can just go to Window, then to Text Mesh Pro and select the Font Asset Creator, which will allow you to create assets out of your fonts. So here I'm going to drag in the regular one and I'm going to select Auto Sizing and then I'm going to generate a font atlas. Once that is done, you can click Save and save that asset. I'm going to save it in my fonts folder. I'm going to save it in my fonts folder directly. Now you can go ahead and select your text that you want to use and then assign this new font that you created. So I'm going to drag this font into my font asset here. Now you can see the text has changed. Now I would like to go ahead and create an outline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change some things in the main settings. For example, I'm just gonna call this one player one. I'm going to, to change the width to 10. The position, well, I'm going to drag it down a little bit so it's closer to the player. Then I'm going to make sure that it's bold. In capital letters, the vertex color is set to white. I'm not using a color gradient this time. So I'm going to turn this one off. Then I'm making sure that wrapping is enabled. And then I'm scrolling all the way down where I get to Montserrat regular SDF material. So here I can now add an outline. I can add a face and so forth. I'm going to first of all focus on the outline. So let me add an outline selecting this bluish color that we had before, something around that color here and adding a thickness. So you can see now I'm creating this outline which can look pretty cool. So if you go all the way to one that is the effect you're gonna get, maybe this is exactly what you want, then there you are. Otherwise, you can play around with this value to create as much of an outline as you like. Now, if you play around with this delete setting, you can see here that you can make your text look kind of thick. All right, next, I would like to make my text glow. So how can I add a glowing text? Well, therefore I go to materials, I'm going to create a new material, which I'm going to call text glow material. And then I'm going to change the shader. So here I'm going to go for text mesh pro and then I'm going to select distance field. Once I've done that, I can open up the debug settings and I want to use a font atlas here. Therefore I'm going to select one and I'm going to select this one, this Montserrat regular SDF Atlas that was generated for us. So let me select that one. Then I'm gonna to go to my project and create a new scene. So let me create a new scene here. 
This one will be the glow text scene. And this scene, I want to change my skybox up a little bit. So I'm going to create another skybox and this skybox will be black. So the tint color should be a black color this time. For the lighting, I'm going to make sure that this skybox is going to be used. So I'm going to drag that right in here for the skybox material. So this lighting window, if you don't have it open, you can find it under window rendering lighting settings. Now let's create another text mesh pro text. So I'm going to create a 3D asset here, which I'm going to call text glow effect. Here I'm now going to play around with the values. The height will be significantly smaller. The position should be a little higher. Then I'm going to use a different element as the material. So the text glow material that I created earlier on. I'm going to change the text from sample text to glow effect. Then I'm going to use the font that we created earlier on. So here in our fonts, our font that we generated earlier on. And the font size, well, let's make it 30. Play around with the alignment, so it's centered. And there is a little bit more space between characters. So I'm just going to change that just a tiny bit. So now you can go ahead and scroll a little bit further down and you can play around with the face value. So here I'm going to leave the color at white. I'm going to set back this delayed value to zero and the outline should be black. So I'm going to create this black outline here with a thickness of, well, you can play around with it, maybe even a thickness of zero. So now I don't have an outline at all, actually. Instead of having the outline, I would like to have a glow. So I'm just gonna add glow here, click on it, and you can see now it opens up the glow settings for me. So the default color is set to green, and you can see the offset is something you can play around with, as well as the inner, outer, and power. So it's best if you go to game mode, there you can see it directly. So let's play around with it a little bit. You can see here, let me change the offset. You can see it generates this offset for me. I can change the thickness of it with inner, as well as the outer glow effect that I want to have and the power of the effect. So you can see towards the right is going down, towards the left is going stronger. So this is how you can create this glow effect for yourself. Now let's look at outline. I'm going to go ahead and create a new scene once again. So create new scene just for the outline itself. Outline text. And I'm going to create a new 3D object, which is this text mesh pro once again. And I'm going to call this one text outline. And I'm going to rename this one. And I'm going to also change the skybox. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to call this one skybox pink because guess what? It's going to be pink. Now let's create a text outline material. So I'm going to duplicate this text glow material from before and I'm going to call this one text outline material. Then I'm going to reset that material and drag it to my text outline effect. Then we need to change the text up a little bit. So I'm going to call this one outline effect. Change the font size a little bit. Make sure I have some spacing between and center the text as well. Now I'm going to scroll down a little bit and you can see here we have the face as well as the outline and I'm going to make sure that the outline has a different color. Now I'm just going to make sure that my skybox is my pink skybox that I created even though this looks pretty ugly. And then I'm going to use the outline and play around with the value here. Let me just change the thickness a little bit and you can see we generate the outline for our text as well. Now let me finally show you how to create a shadow effect using Text Mesh Pro. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new scene here. 
Then I create a new text mesh pro text, which I'm going to call text shadow effect. Then I'm going to assign the white skybox that we prepared before. Duplicate the glow material. This one I'm going to call this one shadow add material. I'm going to reset it so that it doesn't take any settings that we had before. At this point, I'm going to drag the material, this text shadow material to my mesh renderer, as well as I'm going to add the font to my fonts here. Then we can scroll the way down. I'm going to call this one shadow text. The auto size is activated in my case. And then I can scroll all the way down and here play around with the face. For example, I'm going to use a grayish color. You can see this one here. Outline, well, I don't want to use an outline here and I don't want to use a glow here. What I want to use, however, is an underlay. Now you might wonder, where is the shadow? Well, in order to really generate the shadow, you have to change the color in underlay to make sure that the alpha value is set to 255 or one, depending on which RGB settings you have here. So once it's at one, you can see that's the shadow that it generates and you can really play around with the position of the shadow for the X offset as well as the Y offset. And then you can change the delayed settings in order to make it That's another one that you can play around with. So you can see you can change those settings to your liking to create the shadow effect as you want it. All right, now the last one is going to be 3D text. So let's look at that. So I created this new scene for that. I'm going to create a new 3D object, which will be Text Mesh Pro. And I'm going to call this one 3D text. Now the text should also say 3D text here. For this one, I'm going to use my black skybox that I prepared before. So we had it in our material, skybox black. Then I'm going to duplicate the text glow material. I'm going to call this one text 3D material. And then I'm going to reset it. Okay, now once you have this 3D text in the material, you need to make one change. So Instead of using Text Mesh Pro Distance Field, we're going to use Distance Field Surface. Now, this will give us some different options in comparison to what we had before. So then once you have the material, you go to your 3D text and you drag that 3D material in here as element zero for your mesh renderer. And then if you scroll down, you assign all the text correctly, then you will find a bevel here. All right, so with the bevel value, you can play around in order to create a 3D effect now. For this to become even clearer, I'm going to use a texture here, which is this gradient texture that is made available. So I'm just going to use this one here. And then you can see it generates this texture, but at the same time, I can now play around with the bevel values to really see the 3D effect. It's not perfectly visible, so you can really play around with here and you can see this generates this offset and then with the width, you can really make it pop out. Okay, so just play around with those values to th generate the 3D text you want to have. You can round it up a little bit with the roundness, clamp it. You can see now it's going to be pretty soft, but yeah, you can just play around with it to find the right 3D effect that you want to have. All right, so now you have seen how to use Text Mesh Pro to create all of those different text effects glows, outlines, shadows, 3D effects, and so forth. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and also hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on great Unity content. All right, then also check out one of those two videos. All right, and see you later.